Hey everyone, in this video we are going to talk about dispersed camping on public lands in the United States, especially the western United States, and what the different public lands are, what they mean, whether or not you can or cannot camp on them outside of established campgrounds. And that's what we're talking about here. Dispersed camping, boondocking, it is camping outside of established campgrounds or campsites. I'm out here hiking at the ski resort, so that's gonna be the, the backdrop for today's video. You can see the lift here, the ski lift, and then in the summer, you can hike out here. I'm actually hiking up a mountain, and I'll talk about that more at the end of the video once I've talked about all the dispersed camping stuff. And the focus here is really gonna be on vehicle camping because that's what this channel is about, but it can also apply to tent camping. As far as free dispersed camping on public lands in the United States go, there are really two big ones, the big two. And those are the National Forest and the Bureau of Land Management lands or BLM lands. When you want to go camp for free, these two lands are your best bet. I'm in National Forest right now and uh, BLM land is out in the valley below. I'll, uh, I'll show that to you if I get a good look at it. Let's talk about National Forest first. So National Forest is in uh, all the states in the West and in other states in other parts of the country too, but my channel focuses on the Western United States. And so the National Forest is broken up into uh, different non-contiguous units, so like separate islands of national forest across the country. Here in southeast Idaho right now I'm in, I think it's Caribou National Forest, but each unit has a name and each unit allows for free dispersed camping with some asterisks. So national forest land is pretty easy to find. You can look at basically any map and it'll be green. So if you go into Google Maps, you look at the map, you see areas of green. If it's in the mountains, there's a good chance it's National Forest. That's not always the case. It might be National Park uh, on Google Maps, but the green a lot of times is National Forest. Same thing if you look at an atlas, it'll be green. And it'll often be labeled as National Forest. It'll say Caribou National Forest, Targhee National Forest, Wasatch Cache National Forest, Dixie National Forest. Those are all the ones in Utah and Idaho that I'm familiar with. And so most of the time on national forest land, you can just drive out onto the land and uh, usually you'll be driving like through a canyon or something. And then off the side of the road, off the side of the canyon road, you'll see little pullouts. You can camp in those. Or if you're higher up in the mountains, you'll see little dirt side roads going off of the main road. You can usually go and camp off of those. And the best practice for all of these areas that I'm gonna be talking about is that you want to go, go find a place that's already been used as a campsite. So go find like a fire ring or a pullout, places that show previous signs of use as a campsite. Now the asterisk for national forests is that if they are near population centers, larger cities, then um, there are more restrictions. There may be sections where you can't camp like that. There may be sections where you need a pass or a permit to access that area. You can call your local National Forest Ranger Station to find out all that information. But in general, National Forests are a great place to boondock. There are literally tens of thousands, if not more, free campsites on National Forest land in the Western United States. If you're in the mountains and there are forests around and there aren't houses around and you're not in a national park, there's a good chance that you're in National Forest. So now let's go on to talk about the second of the big two and that is BLM land, or Bureau of Land Management lands. And functionally speaking, for our purposes, these are basically the desert analog, the desert version of national forests. They're overseen by a different government agency, but for our purposes, it's the same kind of thing as national forest land as far as camping rules go, but it's just in the desert. So much of Nevada and Utah and Arizona a lot of the western states that are more deserty, huge chunks of those states are BLM land. It can be a little bit more tricky to find uh, the BLM land, the national forest land, because it's not named. Like the BLM portions of land aren't named conveniently, like national forest lands are. And so your best bet to find BLM lands is to get a good state atlas or to uh, go to a, a website that lists public lands. You can Google US public lands map um, or I'll put a couple of them in the description that you can that you can go to and you can toggle to for them to show only National Forest or only BLM land and that's a good way to find all of these lands But anyway, basically once you find BLM land you can go drive out on dirt roads and 
you'll find campsites. It's, it's not that difficult. You can also look on Google Maps on the satellite view to look at dirt roads going off of the main roads and look for, you know, look for little pullouts. Look for, you can even see little fire rings on the satellite view on Google Maps when you're, if you're looking at a campsite. Look to see where other people are camped. You'll see, you know, the big white trailers that people pull, the, the campers, and so that's a, a good way to know if a, if a place is camping friendly. Generally speaking, it's completely free to camp on BLM land as well as National Forest land. And these two land bodies, BLM and National Forest, these constitute at least 90% of my free camping. 95% uh, even, if not more. I'm almost always camping on BLM land or National Forest land. And so basically if you can find the land boundaries of these areas, you can find a free campsite. If the only takeaway you have from this video is to look for BLM or National Forest lands, that's good, that's all, all you really need to know. But just for reference and informational purposes, let's talk about other public lands in the Western United States. Let's talk about national parks. National parks are awesome, I go to several every year, I spend a lot of time in the national parks, but they are not great for free dispersed camping. They're not great for camping uh, in your vehicle outside of established campgrounds, because mostly it's not allowed. I can think of one off the top of my head, one national park in the western US where you can do that, and that's Death Valley National Park in California. And in that case you have to be like half a mile from certain paved roads or a mile from paved roads. There's certain special rules you have to follow in order to, uh, to be able to camp in your vehicle uh, in Death Valley National Park. But most of the time, you can't do it. And so if you're just like looking at a map thinking, where can I camp for free, and you see a national park, um, it's not going to be your best option. I mean, there are national parks that have free campgrounds. Uh, earlier this year, I was in Great Basin National Park in Nevada, and they have free campsites, but it's not like free dispersed camping. You can't camp wherever, you have to camp in certain specific areas. But even that is an exception. Most of the time, uh, there aren't free campsites in national parks. Now, as far as backcountry camping goes, so if you want to hike, if you want to go backpacking, if you want to camp in a tent, uh, away from roads, uh, that definitely opens up more options for you as far as free camping goes. But even then, um, so for example, in, in Yellowstone National Park, you can't just go camp wherever, you can't pitch your tent wherever, you have to pitch your tent in the backcountry, in certain backcountry sites uh, that are designated as such, and you have to pay for the, the permit too. In a place like Arches National Park in southern Utah, um, I think the, the backcountry camping permit is free, may or may, may not be, but um, there, for example, you can camp wherever. Uh, there are no designated backcountry campsites. You do have to follow certain r rules like don't camp under an arch and don't camp uh, right at Native American rock art or, or artifact sites, things like that. So basically, to summarize, national parks, you can sometimes find free camping, you can even more occasionally find free boondocking, but usually you can't and usually they're not great places to look if you're going to do uh, free dispersed camping. So let's go on to national monuments. Again, I've been to a lot of these across the western US, most of them, and again, they're hit or miss. Some of these are, are maintained or run by the National Park Service, some are maintained or run by the National Forest Service, some by the Bureau of Land Management, and so each national monument and each governing body controlling the National Monument uh, has different rules and regulations regarding dispersed camping. In a lot of them, for example, there is no free dispersed camping. You can't camp outside of uh, designated campsites. In others you can, and it's, uh, I think, for example, in, in Canyons of the Ancients, Canyons of the Ancients? I think that's what it's called. National Monument in Western Colorado. Uh, I think you can just go camp wherever, basically. Uh, same thing for Bears Ears National Monument in southeastern Utah. Lots of free dispersed camping out there. But then uh, Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument, also in southern Utah, you need to have a free permit and you have to say approximately where you're going to camp. You don't have to camp in certain designated or marked campsites, but you do have to say I'm going to be camping in this general area. So again, national monuments are kind of hit or miss as far as dispersed camping goes. In general, I'd say that the more remote the area is, the better chance you're going to have of being able to uh, to freely dispersed camp in that area. If you're like five minutes out of a city, then you're probably not going to be able to do that. So let's move on now to national recreation areas. 
These are not super common, but they're definitely out there. The ones that I've spent the most time in are Lake Mead National Recreation Area near Las Vegas and Glen Canyon National Recreation Area, uh, which is where Lake Powell is in southern Utah, northern Arizona. And I know that in those two national recreation areas in particular, uh, there is an entrance fee. You can use your, your National Parks Pass to gain access if you have one. But other than that, uh, there is free dispersed camping. You can go wherever and camp. But that's not the case for all national recreation areas, of course. It couldn't be easy. They have made it difficult. So for example, Golden Gate National Recreation Area, which is, uh, you know, just north of San Francisco around the Golden Gate Bridge. There are established campgrounds there, there's hiking there, but you can understand why there wouldn't be free dispersed camping there being so close to the city. They just don't allow that there. Another good rule of thumb is that if there are a lot of dirt roads crisscrossing the area, and if it's a large area, uh, like the desert, national monuments and national recreation areas, then there's a good chance uh, they allow free dispersed camping there. So overall, again, they're hit or miss. You're gonna have to research each one individually, which is kind of a pain. Maybe I should make one big list of the parks and the national parks and monuments and recreation areas and everything in the Western US and see whether or not they allow dispersed camping and, and what the rules are. I think that'd be pretty useful. Let me know if you think that would be helpful. Okay, let's go on to our next public land grouping and that's the National Wildlife Refuge. Um, there are again not a ton of these out there but they are out there. I'm familiar with a couple of them. One is Kofa National Wildlife Refuge in I guess western Arizona kind of near Quartzsite. There's a lot of free camping out there. I've camped there a couple of times. It's great free camping. No permits or anything required. You just go out and find the campsite and it's super easy. Contrast that with Fish Springs National Wildlife Refuge in the West Desert of Utah. They flat out just don't allow camping, period. So you can't camp there at all. And so, again, unfortunately, this is one of those cases where you're gonna have to just look at each individual one, case by case. If you see it on a map, go Google it and uh, see what other people are doing. Call the visitor center if there is one and see, uh, see what they say. Now let's talk about national preserves. There are even fewer of these around the country. The ones that I have the most experience with are Mojave National Preserve in, uh, in the Southern California Desert, in the Mojave Desert. And then also there's, uh, there's Craters of the Moon National Monument and Preserve here in Idaho. It's like an hour and a half from me. These are more protected than national forests and BLM land, but not as protected as national parks, if that makes sense. So there are regulations about what you can and can't do, but fortunately for us, boondocking, dispersed camping, is one of those things that you can freely do. So most of the time it's not an issue, uh, unless there are certain like wilderness areas within those areas that you're not allowed to access. And I guess that does bring us to wilderness areas. These are the most protected public lands in the United States, um, motorized, Equipment, vehicles are not allowed. Uh, mechanized equipment like uh, bikes, like mountain bikes aren't allowed. So generally you can't drive into them, can't fly your drone there, um, you know, can't run your boat there. For the most part, and I think maybe even entirely, these are walk-in access areas only. And these exist within other public lands. So you can have a wilderness area inside of a national park you can have wilderness area inside of a national forest. You can have wilderness areas inside of BLM land. And uh, these are great for camping if you're walking in and backpacking in, camping with your tent. But uh, as far as drive up campsites are concerned, um, these aren't a good option. We're nearing the end now. Bear with me, we're almost done talking about this. But next up is, uh, is wildlife management areas. I don't have a, a ton of experience with these, but I know that the ones that I have had experience with, they're like, um, so in the fall you can hunt there, and then in the winter uh, they're closed to, to human access to provide, uh, to provide an area for wintering wildlife. So around here, for example, um, there's one just across the mountain here from me. You can drive through it, you can camp there, uh, you can hunt and fish and everything there, but during certain times of the year, it's closed to, to all human access for, uh, I think I think elk are there in winter, so it provides a, an area for the elk to, 
to hang out in during winter. And again, unfortunately, these are hit or miss. Some of them allow camping um, for m most of the year. Some of them don't allow camping at all. The one just down the mountain here uh, does allow camping, but I was looking online at another one that's kind of also nearby. It doesn't allow camping at all. And then still others allow camping only in designated campgrounds. Uh, most of these, in my experience, don't have designated campgrounds, but obviously some do, and so each one is, is different, and you're gonna have to, again, call the management agency of each one or just figure it out on your own. And then next up on the list, I think it's the final one on the list, is uh, state parks. Generally, these aren't good for boondocking. These aren't good for free dispersed camping. Generally speaking, they have campgrounds and you can stay only in those campgrounds, except maybe if you're backpacking. And even then, uh, usually they, they want you to stay in designated spots. That said, I know of at least one, uh, one state park where dispersed camping is allowed. That's Anza Borrego State Park in the, in the Southern California desert. They do allow boondocking there. And uh, if there's one, there are probably a couple others, but I can't think of any other ones off the top of my head. And so generally speaking, these aren't a good option. And that's basically it. That's all I wanted to cover in this video. There are other places. There are, you know, national memorials and national historic battlefields, national seashores, city parks, county parks. Most of these don't allow boondocking. But again, some do. It's hit or miss. It's case by case basis, unhelpfully. And so you're just gonna have to put the legwork in and figure out each one, see whether each one allows uh, for boondocking or dispersed camping or not. But generally speaking, they don't. And so if you see those on a map, you're probably gonna need to look elsewhere. So that's it basically. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I'm gonna continue hiking up the mountain and I'm actually on top of the ridge now. I just need to go follow this ridge over here to the top of the peak here. And again, this is all national forest land. These mountains out here, this is all national forest land. In the valley down below, there's a mixture of BLM and private land. And if you're gonna stick with me here for another minute or two as I climb up the top of this mountain, let me tell you about it. So this is a county high point. Those of you who've been following my channel know that I'm interested in county high pointing, which is going up to the highest point in each county in a state. I've done 26 out of the 29 counties in Utah, and I've done something like I don't know, 10 of the 44 Idaho counties. This is one of the Idaho counties. It's actually the county that I live in. It's the closest county to me. The trailhead down at the ski resort was 20 minutes from where I live. This mountain is called Bonneville Peak. It's the highest point in this mountain range, which is the Portneuf mountain range. All right, made it up to the top here. Beautiful day, beautiful views. It took me exactly two hours to get up here. I was going pretty slow down lower because I had to had to walk slowly so I wasn't huffing and puffing while I was recording that, that part lower down. 2,728 feet of elevation gain over 3.05 miles. Great views from up here. Here's the summit cairn with the ski sticking out of it. Not sure what this little doghouse looking thing is. Maybe it was a weather station at some point. Beautiful day in the mountains of southeast Idaho. One more check mark on the list of the 44 Idaho County High Points. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next video.